Word of the Lord 2024. Conquer through faith. Be enriched as you listen. Are you ready for the Word of the Lord? As you know, each year, at the beginning of each year, on the first of each year, we bring a message which we call as the Word of the Lord. It simply a message that we feel God is speaking and highlighting for us for the year ahead. Now, of course, all of us understand that we live by the entirety of the Scriptures. And we live by the entirety of God's Word. We read the Bible. We continue to study. We continue to look to uh, everything God has given to us in the Scriptures. But the Word of the Lord serves as one of the things that God wants us to focus on and, and press towards and use in our journey for 2024. So that's why we bring the Word of the Lord. And just listen to God and say, God, what is that word that you want us to emphasize for the people that we serve in our community and those who connect with us uh, uh, through other ways? What is the Word of the Lord? And we bring that to you in the, in the message and also kind of directs the rest of the messages and the teaching and things that happen during the course of the year. We try to stay aligned to the Word of the Lord as we journey through 2020, uh, through the year ahead. So, for 2024, this is what I believe God speaking to us wants to emphasize to us. Three words. You ready? Conquer through faith. Conquer through faith. Faith. So everybody say, conquer through faith. Take your Jerichos. Subdue adversaries through faith. Okay, why don't we stand up for a little, just get a little relaxed here. Turn around to your neighbor if you can and tell them, conquer through faith. Take your Jerichos. Subdue adversaries through faith. Turn around to the other person next, next to you say, conquer through faith. Take your Jerichos. Subdue adversaries through faith in God. God bless you. May be seated, please. Thank you. Little, so, so let's humor pastor a little bit. <laughs> no, but this is serious. I want to read the, the verses that I want to bring highlight to us. In Hebrews chapter 11... Verses 30, 33, and 34. Hebrews 11, 30, verses 30, 33, and 34. Verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, Obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Now, just a little comment here while we are using military language. We're not implying in any way any kind of physical violence. That's not what we're talking about. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're talking about applying these spiritually in our own journey in life, in the situations that we're facing, in the, in the circumstances that we have to deal with. We're talking about that. You all with me so far? Yes? So, conquer through faith. Take your Jerichos. Subdue adversaries through faith. So in 2024, I want to encourage all of us, invite all of us to focus on that. Conquer through faith. Take your Jerichos. Subdue adversaries through faith. In God. Another scripture I want to read, and we will spend some time in these two passages. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible tells us, For let's read it out together, please. Let's read it. For whatever 
is born of God, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Whoever is born of God, that includes you. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So it includes you. For whoever is born of God, overcomes the world. You are a world overcomer. You can overcome and you will overcome the things that you and I face in this world. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So that means to begin with, God has already declared you as an overcomer. He didn't say there will not be things to overcome. The fact that he's declared you as an overcomer means there are going to be things you have to overcome. There are going to be those challenges. There are going to be those struggles. There are going to be those battles. But he's already declared you as an overcomer. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. But he also tells us, and this is how you're going to have the victory. It's going to be through your faith. So faith in God is so important. Because that's how you and I are going to gain victory over the world. So let's spend some time here in this message. Take your Jericho. So con conquer through faith. The first thing we want to look at is take your Jericho. So in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13, the Bible says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Hebrews 11.30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down Afterward, after they were encircled for seven days. Let's think about that. Now we understand the Old Testament story. When God brought his people out of Egypt, they journeyed all the way to the promised land. They reached the river Jordan and it took 40 years now because of all of their disobedience and so on. But now they cross the river Jordan. They come in to the land of Canaan. Their first conquest had to be the city of Jericho. First conquest. Now, archaeologists have found the city of Jericho where it used to be. About 30 kilometers east of the city of Jerusalem. About 25 kilometers north of the Dead Sea. And they found interesting discoveries and and again these are all just estimates because we are reconstructing from archaeological evidence things that happened thousands of years ago we're going back now to about 1550 to 1400 bc so what they estimate based on the archaeological finding is that the city of jericho probably covered between somewhere between again these are just estimates six to nine acres of land. The perimeter was approximately about two kilometers. If you had to walk around it, it was approximately two kilometers. So you can imagine this should not have normal walking, should not have taken more than half an hour to walk around the city wall. Shouldn't, should not have taken more than that. Now, what did God instruct Joshua and the people. So they came there. They see, okay, the, our first conquest. We've got to conquer Jericho. And God says, Joshua, here's what I want you to do. And this is the most absurd military strategy. For six days, I want you, with some of your people, the priests carry the Ark of the Covenant. You've got some priests, have some priests, seven, seven priests in front, blowing the rams on, the trumpets. A portion of soldiers in front of them and a portion of soldiers behind. So that's the marching band, so to speak. And they march around the city of Jericho once and do this for six days. It's a 30 minute walk, not too bad. Maybe it took a little longer because they had to carry the Ark of the Covenant and they had the trumpets blowing, all of those things. So just estimate. So you wake up day one, 30 minute walk, go back and you're sitting waiting. God, what? 
And so they do this for six days. And God said, on the seventh day, do it seven times. Well, they did it seven times. So it took maybe about three hours, maybe. And then when you're completed seven times, at the end of it, shout with a loud shout. And the walls of the city will go down flat. Now, very interesting archaeological finding. In 1950, an archaeologist led by a woman named Kathleen, Kathleen Kenyon, and again in 1997, a group of Italian archaeologists, here's what they found. Interestingly, in the city of Jericho, the, 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 the material for the walls, the, the you know, I'm using the word bricks because that's what we are familiar. But the stones that were used to build the wall are lying exactly there in place at the base of where the walls were. Now, it is not to say that something supernatural. They don't know how it happened. But they can tell us the, wall, the material used to build the walls are lying right there at the base of where the walls were. This is the archaeological Finding. How it happened, we don't know. Meaning, they don't know. They could say, maybe it was an earthquake, maybe somebody broke it down, whatever. But the, all the material is right there. But the Bible says, the walls of the city went down flat. That's just a side note. That's not the main point. But here's the, the main point. That in order to take our Jerichos, in order for you to take your Jericho, what does Jericho represent? Even before they began the battle in Joshua chapter 6 and verse 2, God told Joshua, Joshua, see, I have given you this city, its people, its inhabitants. I have given you the city, meaning Jericho is yours. So what does Jericho represent to you and me? Something that God has promised, something that God has said, it's for you. Go take it. It may be a verse, it may be a promise in the Bible, it may be a plan and a purpose that God has for your life, and God saying, that's yours, go take your Jericho. And they say, God, how do I do it? And maybe the way God leads you, the way God leads you to exercise your faith in order to take your Jericho may not appeal to your rational mind. You say, God, I've never heard of anybody else do that. I've never heard of anybody else take a hold of the word of God and believe that they could see their Jerichos come down. But God, because you said it, I'll do it. Joshua didn't try to propose a different strategy to God. God, I've never heard anybody use that strategy. I've got a better one, God. No. God said, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews eleven thirty, by faith, or through faith, the walls of the city of Jericho came down. By faith or through faith. So what is your Jericho or what are your Jerichos? Conquer through faith. Tell your neighbor, conquer through faith. Tell them, take your Jerichos. Take it by faith. The key is that we must follow God's instructions. Follow what God puts on your heart and say, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. In Joshua chapter 6 and in verse 11, it's not on the screen, but there's one verse that in, in, in this whole narrative, it's, it's so touching, at least for me. Joshua 6, 11, he says, So they made the ark of the Lord go around the walls. That's all the verse says. They made the ark of the Lord go around the Wall. So we think about the priests blowing the trumpet. We think about the priests carrying the ark. We think about the soldiers before and the soldiers behind. It's all people, yes. But really, verse 11 is highlighting. What really is, is the ark of the Lord was going around Jericho. There's something about that. What does the ark of the Lord represent? It represents the presence of God and it represents the covenant of God. Because the other name is the ark of the covenant. Surround your Jericho with God's presence. Surround your Jericho with the covenant that God has given you. Are you understanding that? 
You march around your Jericho and say, my God has said this to me. And you walls, you're going to come down flat. My God has said this to me. So you're walking around your Jericho with your covenant with God. You're walking around your Jericho with your praises ringing to God. Because you know God inhabits your praises. Are you listening? It's very powerful. How are you going to exercise your faith in God? You surround your Jericho with your faith in God's covenant to you. The promise that God has made to you. You surround your Jericho with praises to God. Say, my God is worthy. My God is faithful. It may take seven days, but that doesn't mean he's late. He's just telling me to be obedient. He's just telling me to exercise my faith. And I don't care if it takes seven days, seven months, or seven years. The walls of Jericho are coming down. Amen. Why did... God say seven days. Could he have done it in seven minutes? Of course he could have done it in seven minutes. So for whose benefit did he say walk seven days? Not for his. He did, didn't need seven days to get things in order. He could have done it in seven seconds. But those seven days were for the people's benefit. They had to prove their faith. They had to walk in faith. And then the walls of Jericho came down. So I don't know how many days, minutes, months, or years it'll take in your life or my life. And it doesn't really matter. You and I just say, Lord, we know that we will conquer through faith. That the walls of Jericho will come down. I'm going to surround these walls with the covenant that you've given me and with the praises that you put in my mouth. I will surround these walls and I know the walls of Jericho will come down. Amen? The next thing. Subdue adversaries. And once again, I'm, Hebrews 11.33 says this. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. They conquered kingdoms through faith. They subdued their adversaries through faith. Now, what are your adversaries? Remember, we are not fighting flesh and blood. But there may be some challenges that you're facing. There may be sickness you're battling. There may be financial needs you're facing. Maybe there are situations that are, you're, are adversarial to you. Whatever your situations are, you subdue your adversaries through your faith in God. Amen? Now, once again, going back to what happened with the people of Israel. When God led His people... Out of Egypt. And he was bringing them in to the land of promise. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 and 2. He said. You are going to face enemies. That are bigger than you. You are going to face nations and enemies. That are much bigger than you. Much bigger. But. The Lord is going to help you conquer them. So, as you journey through 2024, your adversaries may seem much bigger than you. They may seem, God, I've never seen this kind of a situation before. God, I have no idea how to handle this. God, this problem maybe is just too big for me. God, this situation is too difficult. This challenge is too intense. God, I don't know. I've never faced an enemy like this before. But don't be afraid. The Lord your God is with you. And through faith, you conquer. Through faith, you conquer. You subdue your adversaries. So God told his people, you're going to face nations and kingdoms mightier than you. But I'm going to help you conquer them. And God's going to help you and me subdue our adversaries. Whatever challenge. Whatever situation, whatever the enemy comes against you with, you will subdue. So, what must we do? Two action items I want to place before us. Number one is to build strong faith. That's our responsibility. To build strong faith in God. I want you to be intentional about it. To take time. To go to the promises of God in relation to your Jericho. Go to the promises of God in relation to the adversaries that you want to subdue in your life. 
build faith in God. And we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing God's words. We know that. So you go intentionally. Build your faith in God. And we, as a pastoral team, as we minister to you through the course of this year, are going to help us do that. That we will build and strengthen our faith in God as we minister God's word. We want you to build strong faith. It's because he's, the Bible says it's through faith that we overcome. Through faith we overcome. So build strong faith in your heart. Be intentional about it. So that you can conquer through faith. You build your faith muscle by feeding on the word of God. By speaking the word of God. By acting on the word of God. Keep building it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You keep feeding your, your spirit with the word of God. You keep speaking the word of God and keep acting on the word of God. Second action item. Determine to conquer. Determine to conquer. If we quit before we fight, we lose even before we start. So don't quit. Be determined. I'm going to win. Why should you quit? When God has already said, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. God has already said, you're going to win. Why do you want to quit? Engage. Fight. Be determined. Now I know sometimes it's tiring. God, seven days. If you had told me seven seconds, I can do it. But seven days, God, it's long. We don't like that. We want to push a button. Pastor, lay your hand on me. <laughs> we want some instant. But you've got to be determined. I'm going to fight till the end because I know what the end is. I win. You win. But you got to fight till the end. You got to see it through. So be determined. What are your Jerichos? You say, God, I'll march around for five days and it hasn't come yet. God said, seven, just two more. Maybe you're on the seventh day and you're the fourth round. Say, God, this has been an intense day. I, I'm, I'm used to one round a day. <laughs> but God, today, I've been going around the walls four times. They still haven't come down. God said, you got three more. Three more. You're close. You're not there yet. But three more. And you come to the end. And in the end, you see the victory. But you've got to be determined. To go till the end. It's not enough going 75%. You still haven't finished. You still haven't experienced victory. It's not enough going 80% or 90 or even 95%. You still haven't finished. You still haven't experienced the victory that God has waiting for you. So you've got to be determined. God, I'm going to push through. I'm determined to win however long the stakes. My Jericho is going to come down. I'm going to conquer through faith. I'm going to take my Jerichos. I'm going to subdue my adversaries. Because God has already determined the outcome. He said, whatever is born of God overcomes. Overcomes the world. But you've got to stay through. So be determined. That's the second action item. First, build strong faith. Build strong faith. Go listen to the word of God. Put your... You know, your, uh, whatever, however you listen, put your, your, your earphones on and just, just listen, listen, listen to the word. Keep listening to the word. Keep listening. Oh, you like to read, read, whatever. Just get the word into your spirit. Build strong faith. Speak your faith. Act your faith. And be determined to win. Because the victory is sure. Victory is yours. First John 5, 4. Worship team, please go. First John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. 
And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You are born of God. God has already declared you as an overcomer. And your faith has already put you in a place of victory. Notice the past tense of that verse. It says, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. It's, it, it's not even saying it's going to overcome. It says in past tense, it has overcome. Now, words, in the realm of the spirit, you're already a winner. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith. In other words, God is saying it's already done. Your faith has overcome. Now you've got to journey through it. Jericho is yours. Just keep walking around it. Just do what I tell you. Jericho is yours. The victory is yours. You walk in faith. By faith, the walls of Jericho came down. There are many attributes or characteristics of God that are revealed to us in the Bible using language that you and I can understand. And one of these characteristics I just want to bring to our attention before we close is that the Bible presents God as the God who breaks through. As the God who goes before his people and breaks through an impasse. So you try to imagine there's a huge barrier. And you know that God wants you to get, on, get to the other side. This barrier is, is just impregnable. You can't get through it on yourself. But the Bible tells us that God is a God who goes before us. And he breaks through that barrier so that we can pass through. He's known as the God of breakthrough. In Micah, the Old Testament book of Micah, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, it's talking about the people of God. And, uh, and based, the, the context, obviously, is about God bringing his people back to their own land. But how is it going to happen? He says this in Micah chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob, meaning the people of Israel. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I'll put them together like sheep of the fold, like a flock in the midst of their pasture. They shall make a loud noise because of so many people. In other words, I'm going to bring them all back to the land. But how is it going to happen? Verse 13. Talking about God, the prophet says, the one who breaks open, that is God who breaks through, the God who breaks open, will come before them and they will break out. Or that means they will come through. Pass through the gate and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at the head. God is the one who breaks through. He will break open the way and the people will pass through. Their king will lead them and they will come. The leader will lead them and they come through. And God is at the head. God is the first person in front. The God of breakthrough. So even if things look impossible, who is at the head? God. God is at the head. He's the first person in line. And tell me, is there any wall that can stop God? Is there any barrier? Is there any closed door that can stop God? Who's going to open the way? Who's going to break open the way for you? The God of breakthrough. He's going to break it open for you. And you pass through. Amen. And it is this God who's telling you that you must conquer through faith. It is this God who's telling you, take your Jerichos, subdue your adversaries this year. So in the next few moments, I want us to do something. I want between you and God, you say, God, these are my Jerichos. 
Maybe you have one, maybe you have two, maybe you have three. You have many Jerichos that you need to conquer. I don't know. I know of some that I've been circling around for some time. I've got some Jerichos that I know I've got to take. So you say, God, these are my Jerichos. And these are my adversaries. Meaning these are things that I want to subdue in my life. For the enemy is brought against me. I don't need to tolerate it. I don't need to put up with it. I'm going to subdue it. I'm going to conquer it. So you stand before God and say, God, this year, 2024, I want you to help me. You are the God of breakthrough. You are the head. I want you to help me, God, to conquer these Jerichos and to subdue these adversaries. It's different for each one of us because we are all in different stages of life going through different experiences but I want you to stand before God today and say God you help me I want to see the walls of my Jericho come right down show me how give me the instructions give me the strategies give me the wisdom I need to see my Jerichos come down. Show me how. Show me how to subdue my adversaries. Show me how. Can we all do that? So let's rise to our feet, please. As you stand before God this morning, those of you watching online, wherever you are, you can do the same thing. You may be in your living room, you can pray right there. You may be in your bedroom on your bed watching this. You can do it right there, wherever you are. Although some of you may be watching this at a later point in time, but wherever you are, you can pray. And you just go before God and say, God, I want to conquer through faith in 2024. And God, these are my Jerichos that I want to conquer. These are my adversaries. These are my struggles. These are my challenges that I want to subdue in 2023 and God show me how give me the instructions give me the strategies show me how to do this everybody let's just take some time to pray as the worship team leads us I want you to pray then I'll come back and pray but take some time to pray
people assemble here this morning God and those who are watching online that God as we take a hold of your word determined to conquer through faith Father this year in 2024 I pray for each one here God that whatever our Jericho's might be that we will hear from heaven and receive your instruction, your strategy. And how to see the Jericho conquered. To see the walls of our Jerichos come down. So that we can take possession of the promises that you have given to us. That we will take possession of our Jerichos. Of what you said in your word is ours. Father, I pray that you help each of us subdue our adversaries, whatever that might be in our lives. Sicknesses and diseases and pains and disabilities and situations that we need to overcome. Or financial problems or situations in the home, in the family, in the marriage. God, that in every area we'll be able to subdue our adversaries. That we will conquer through faith. Father, I pray that each of us will build strong faith as we journey through 2024. We will learn to trust you even more. We will learn to have even more faith in you, God. That God, each of us will be determined to win that we won't give up even if the battle seems long and the battle seems hard. But be determined to win. We won't quit. We won't give up. And God, that we will, each one of us will see the God of breakthrough. Breaking through before us. Breaking through the Jerichos. Breaking through our adversaries. And seeing victory. Seeing conquest. Seeing triumph. That each one of us will see it. Because God, you always cause us to triumph in Christ. You always cause us to triumph. And we thank you, Father. We thank you. 
Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's say it again. Conquer through faith. Take your Jerichos. Subdue adversaries through faith in God. Conquer through faith. Take your Jerichos. Subdue adversaries through faith. The Pastor Paul Emmanuel is going to come and give us a few instructions. You know, we have something for you to take back. He's going to give us information on that. And then he's also going to pronounce the benediction. Uh, those of us, our pastors, we're going to make our way to the exit. So at least we get to shake hands once a year. I'm just joking. So we'll make our way to the end. We'll stand at the exit. So on your way out, we'll just shake hands. We'll say, be able to say that way. We'll be able to say hello to everybody. Is that okay? So just, just stay here while he's giving you instructions and does the benediction. We'll make our way out. Be at the end exit so we can say hi to everybody. See you. Uh, just a few instructions. Um, next Sunday, January 7th, uh, we will have our regular services at all our locations, north, south, east, west, and uh, at the regular service timings as well. Also, we have the Word of the Lord magnets and bookmarks and badges available. Uh, they're there at the exit, so even as you exit out, please remember to collect them uh, on your way out. Awesome. Right? Uh, so, let's just receive the benediction. We close. Let's. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcw.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.